more to be seen. I'm going to switch over here so we don't miss it. I have seen the resultant board states. I have not actually seen this play. I watched him play it a bunch. Okay. Um, but it, I kind of caught a bunch of middle of games, and it always feels like Brandon is pretty far behind yep. on a plan A, but mm -hmm. just is like always scrapping in there, and there's like one card that he draws, and it's like, oh, okay, I just drew um, I just drew Tireless Provisioner, and all of a sudden I'm winning the game. Just okay. like wild, wild situations where you feel like he's very far behind, and all of a sudden Gold Vein Hydra comes through and just yep. crashes and wins the game. Yeah, the game that I saw, he was uh, he had blocked down an opposition agent that stuffed his green sun zenith, mm. uh, leaving his opponent with a Dothy Voidwalker. He had Chrome Host Seed Shark, uh, some other... Oh, a Scooze, I think? Yeah, a Scoo a Scooze mm -hmm. or Chrome Host Seed Shark. Uh, he was scrapping for lands. He had a forest and a waterlog grove. Bass Bond, Zurn Orb. And then it took a, a little while for me to see it. An army of like <laughs> one and two pip incubates that just weren't oh, active yet. Because he was short the mana for it. Yes. Because they cost, is it three to flip? Two. Two to they flip? cost yeah. two to flip each. Yeah, so he was just kind of scrapping, trying to make plays to start turning on the incubates um, to, to eventually turn a corner. But it just, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if he got there or not. That was the, that was the game I saw where he was like, Losing wicked bad to uh, strip mine and eventually was able to untap with Scoos and then in response to uh, weather blue. Brandon versus Jake. Jake. Uh, okay. Brandon's taking a quick breather. Yep. He, he just lost to Adam and walking it off for a second. Okay. What is uh, Brandon's record? One and something, I think. Got so it. I'll, I'll double check. Okay. And um, and in response to a life removal, he ate the the strip mine. Nice. So he might have been able to claw from underneath it. Okay. Jake's window side. Got it. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I, I really do like um, Brandon's deck. I think it's it has a ton of card draw and it has a ton of counter spells. He, yeah, he had a problem building it like, um, in the sense that there were some cards where he just didn't know if they wanted to be in the main or not. He yeah. questioned. Um, he took. I don't want to say it was an early mental misstep, but he took mental misstep at a point in time of the draft where he didn't realize, he didn't know exactly what he was going to be countering across the board. Right. So uh, that's when you have to do it, though. Mental misstep is just like a card that gets taken in eleventh pick. Yeah. And like I said, it wasn't uh, bad. Who won that one? Oh, uh, it. Uh, in the end, Mason ended up pulling out the win there. Q was better. Yeah. It was. Uh, it was incredibly good matches though. You should watch the VOD if you that get a chance. Got it. All right, cool. All right, so uh, Brandon's deck has some pretty sweet tech in here, right? Obviously, Ancestral Recall is very mm -hmm. good. Brainstorm is another copy of Ancestral Recall. Yep. There's Gush, which is another copy of Ancestral Recall, mm -hmm. and Lorraine Revealed. So lots of ways to draw tons of cards. Yes. He also has Mystical Tutor into uh, into a Time Temporal Walk. Temporal Mastery. Via the, yeah, Temporal Mastery. He also has uh, Echo of Aeons and Time Twister. He has two copies of Time Twister because he has the Lion's Eye Diamond combo with Echo of Aeons. That gets paid off with things like uh, Chrome Host Seed Shark obviously turns the Echo of Aeons into a 6-drop because it sees that it has 6 mana. Uh, and Hull Breacher in combination with those wheels is really strong. So this is kind of like a traditional wheels deck that we've seen. But rather than trying to like, I'm going to wheel into a crazy like Tendrils of Agony combo, it's a wheel deck that wins off of a bunch of creatures that get played out, like Titania yeah. and things like that. Um, so I was talking to Brandon uh, when, while I was watching him build his list, and I mentioned this on the cast, and I talked to him about it. Not the current vision, uh, version of the Vintage Cube, but the previous iteration had the Titania, Bounce Land, Zern, Orb, mm -hmm. Crab combo. And he said he played the ever-living heck out of that <laughs> version of the cube. Yeah. So the wheels plan into Fast Bond, Growth Chamber, Mill sense. you out, Incubate you out, whatever I need, um, Zern, Orb you out, mm -hmm. was, uh, I think, part of that plan, having the experience with that deck. Totally. Um yeah, fast bond, crucible, Zernorb is yeah. the, the classic combo for yeah. Brandon. So he wanted, I think he wanted to be more on the mill plan than he did on the infinite mana plan, which is something that we were talking about. If you bring in spelunking or amulet of vigor, you don't really need the infinite mana unless that you want to make sense. an infinitely large gold vein hydra at the end of the day. Or, that, yeah. So, and then the deck he's playing against obviously <coughs> is this uh, red green sneak attack. It runs lots of little dudes to generate mana. Has Ragga Draga as one of the payoffs, but the primary plan is to sneak attack in a Terastodon, Ulamog, or Emrakul. So we've oh, seen yeah, we've to... seen Channel Emrakul happen on turn one um, in two matches. So, so actually, there's a lot more to be doing with Sneak Attack. Can we instead of sort by name, sort by uh, mana value? Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, they're just about to start as well. So, so. we have Atroxa, Atali, Trasted on Woodfall Promise, Ulamog, and Emrakul. We have that is one, we have one, two, three, four, five, six out of forty is three out of twenty. So that's you know fifteen percent of the deck. It's a lot. Yeah, um, smaller percent for Natural Order, but still a good option overall. There we go. Yeah. 
All right, so let's uh, let's jump over to see this match. It's just starting up right now. Looks like Brandon has some lands, a lot of lands. A brazen borrower. Yes. Channel. No. No, channels on Jake's side. Sylvan Carry is was... the best time to play this card. Turn one off of a land and a mox. It's pretty good with a mox. Okay, there's a fast bond. Okay. So it begins. Two more there's lands. Two. Going to 18. And. Gush! Oh, look, oh, look, look at that. that! Pooling two. Yep. This is covered in the Gush book. I'm yeah, yeah. This exact scenario. It's true. It's just like when you uh, alt cast your days. If you're going to use an untapped island, you should tap that island just to make uh -huh. sure you don't get dazed right back. Oh, and he drew the green sun zenith as well. So he's going to replay these going to 16. Uh, play Ooh, a shell dock isle tap. 15. Yep. And then is it five off shell dock? Four. Hideaway. Hideaway is always four. Yeah. Okay. I see oh, a, it's a hull like breacher. A lands. That's a hull breacher. Yep. I think it's three lands on Hollow Breacher. I think okay. he might have been forced on that one. But that's going to be a really fun ambush target. Totally. Now, uh, not like Jake's going to be drawing a lot of cards with his list. but No, but he will if you cast a Time Twister. Yes. Okay, so then I assume he's going to... Oh, he only has blue, so he can't do the... the um, he can't do Green Sun Zenith yet. No. That's the rub here. And... At, at, based on the current board state, it's unlikely that your opponent is going to untap and sneak attack you dead, so tapping down for the Brazen Bar... Oh, sorry, taking down the Brazen Bar or Shield Petty Theft is probably fine. That's true. Yeah, I mean, Jake does have... Ooh, Jake has three mocks in. Yep. Oh, Twister, okay. Yep, refill. That's what you want to be doing with the Fast Bond deck. Dump, your, dump all your lands, refill, yep. find, the, find the Zern Orb, play it all out again, and just keep refilling. And he still has one untapped mana as well. Yep, and... I think the the only real effect that I f that I feel Brandon is missing is an exile effect, like a delve spell. Sure. It doesn't have to be in a world breach. It could have been the dig through time of the treasure cruise that we saw taken away. Yep. Um, by Elaine and Mason, respectively. I mean, he's running he's running enough colors that he could also run Yagwas. Will nobody drafted it? Yeah, true. I'm just trying to think. At some point in time, I just want all wheels, no mana. Oh, I see. Okay. Right, to just get the... Because eventually you just make infinite life and it becomes irrelevant and now you want to just start doing things. Sure. So just wheel, play it all. Wheel. Another Brazen Borrower. Oh, uh, okay. So we pull that back up again. I see three more lands. Crystal Vein, Gemstone, Mine, and Tropical Island. <coughs> so he has a ton of mana available. Yeah. I still don't know what he's doing with that Crystal Vein aside from the fact that it sacrifices. So to uh, itself. So let's go with Titania. It sacrifices to itself. So let's go with Titania. It generates a ton of mana. That's the main reason. Okay. It just, you generate two mana, and then you sacrifice it, and you replay it off of the Crucible, and yep. you have infinite mana. Okay. Well, like, mana bounded by your life. All right, so this is five. So we have two counters left on the gemstone. We are angrily tra tracking state, sacking this, as That's expected. Two. Crucible? No. Titania. Titania, okay. So Titania brings it back for even more mana. Mm-hmm. Dude, yeah, I don't know what he's going to be doing with all this mana, but he has a lot of it. It's a good turn one. It is. He could uh, play Echo of Aeons if he gets it. Oh, that's true. When does Titania make the 5-5? Five, five? It makes a 5-3 when, when it's the sorry. creature dies. When the land, when the land dies. dies. Okay. So it's ETP triggers to return a land from your graveyard to the battlefield, and Correct. then it has that, the, the uh, whenever land is put into your graveyard from the battlefield. Right, so the classic is to get a fetch land, or in his case, yep. a crystal vein. Yep, and just so cycle make, through. Yeah, he's threatening a 5-3 whenever he wants it. Or the Zoran Orb. Sure. Blah. That is very true. Yeah. And my land's deck actually cut Zoran Orb, despite that sweet play. Okay. Like actual lands lands? Yeah, it's 75 lands. Okay. Oh, for a commander? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, the deck I played. Yeah, it's yeah, really yeah. fun. All right, so let's see. He's uh, he's threatening a whole lot. Jake, I mean, if he has a Chrome Mox or a Mox Ruby, he could threaten a does, which he uh, does not. sneak attack, but yeah. So he played his land for the turn, and I do not believe I see a Chrome Mox in hand. I think that's turn Timber Symbiosis There's all the way on the right. There's a channel There's and a, a channel Wordful there? Primus, I think. Okay. Arboreal? Yep. We're really not under a lot of pressure. We can take our time. Maybe. But <laughs> Brandon has a lot of draws that just kill you, though. Nothing, aside from Goldvein Hydra, nothing else in the list has haste, right? I mean, Echo of Aeons. <laughs> yeah, the... We are at a spot now where Shell Dock Isle is going to be live real soon, so the Hushbringer does... That's a great point. You mentioned the, the Twister off, all right? Great ambush play. So this, 
The draw step s removes one. Okay. And it generates a 5-3. This is a 5-3. So and we're also thinning the deck again, which is relevant not just to the math right. of, of what you're going to draw, but also to the Shell Dock Isle. He didn't make. He didn't use the Crystal Vein to make a 5-3 on the end step, though, which is interesting. Yeah, maybe the Gold of Hinder is in hand. Oh, that would be that would be a great card to drop right now. Yeah. Okay, so Jake's side, I saw uh, Windswept Heath, there's a red-green land, turn timber symbiosis. Those are three out of the five cards left. Mm -hmm. I do not see a sneak attack. So if Channel's in there, that's four out of the five cards. I don't know if... was. Did you see a Woodfall Primus, or are we... I'm not sure. I, th okay. I thought it was a big green creature, but I could be wrong. Okay. It may have been that Arbor Elf, actually. That, yeah, that's a Woodfall Primus. Okay. And then a Windswept Heath, yeah. Cody got Kyle 2-1 in a really good match. Nice. All right, so we have two 5-3s now. One of them can attack. Yeah. And we tapped the Shell Dock Isle, so we're either Brendan knows he's not at 20 yet, or he doesn't care. This is four. Or maybe there's just a land under there, right? No, no it's, it's a Hull It's a Hull, Hull, Hull Breacher. Hull Breacher. Oh. I kept saying Hushbringer. That's the white. Um, yes. Torp Orb. So, yeah, he made the 5-3 now. Presumably he wants to use the mana for something. Yep, so it's six. There's gold vein, the gold vein hydra. Yeah, you called it. He didn't max it out. No, so that's 11. Honk. Uh, he was high on that card in chat. I mean, the gold vein. Yeah, Look, it's good. Fireball with legs has been a good play since the Mist Veil hydra or Mist Cutter hydra or whatever was yeah. in Theros, right? Why does he leave up two mana? What's going on there? Uh, I don't see anything in his lit. Oh, day, we have... Well, days doesn't make sense. Recall, brainstorm, days... Ancestral. Ancestral. Okay, this is totally... Oh, he's a brazen borrower? Borrower. Yes, that's right. He has brazen borrower in hand. We knew that. Yep. Okay, so there's... There's a turn timber symbiosis. I think that... Is that a tolly? Yeah, that's no, a tolly. tolly. All right. A tolly doesn't do anything by itself. It, like, finds one card to start with. Off each player's library. Before. Yeah. Off your own as well? Mm-hmm. Nope. nope. Primal Conqueror, Conqueror the, the two-side one. There it is. Each player exiles cards from the top of their library until they exile a non-land card. Oh, so it always hits. Yes. So. Jeez. Then you get to cast them. It you does, may cast any number spin. of spells from Without among the non-land cards exiled this way without paying their mana costs. Okay, but it's only on ETB, oh, not on attack. Correct. Okay. Ignoble High Arc it got a little stupid. Days. <laughs> that's Wait, it. That's, that's, that's a non-land card. You may cast it. You want to cast a target here? Otherwise, it's exiles forever. Yep. Right. So there's no question here. It's just, do you want to play the days or not? This Correct. Is... Oh, but he, he... He saw the card. Yeah, he's sure. asking if you want... Uh, the, we know the bottom three cards of the library are lands, but whatever. Uh, he just put it in the middle somewhere. I know, but he's shuffling now. Is he? Okay. Yeah. It's fine. I don't think it's gonna. A quick, somebody break the open the door and you'll judge. Nah. The only one left is a lean. We don't have our. We don't have the hair dryer anymore. Uh, oh until, yeah, I forgot. Brandon's already <laughs> tilt anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How so? <laughs> one three. Oh yeah. whatever. His deck is better than that record. I think. I'm not sure it is, but like it's you know he's just. It's doing a lot of things. Magic it's is not a, as focused as this deck normally is. Right? Yeah, I that that I can agree with. Draft. This it, is a brutal draft yeah. pool though. There's a ton of people that are very good. Yeah. yeah. Patwang. And now you lose. Yep. Yeah. And that was the two. <laughs> yes. Magic is a game of both luck and skill. Oh, yeah. Right? Well, that's what I've tried to be. Maddie's playing Lorcana, my 11 year old. And yep. I'm trying to get through it, like so much of things. And then I was like, she be like, how is it 19 lore? And they drew this. I'm like, sometimes they just draw it. Right? Yeah. Like, just like, I was going to uh, win. And they drew it. I used to have a local who, one of his favorite statements when he would just lose, quote, seemingly out of nowhere, is uh -huh. better lucky than good. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. The thing I like, I think Magic players and. I used to play a, lot of, play a lot of poker as well. Um, I think one of the things that you can say about players of Magic and poker is that they tend to be very good at rolling with punches. And obviously there are exceptions to this. Yeah. But at high level Magic players, I think that a lot of times they accept that life is going to hit you in weird ways and move on from it. Like, um, I agree, but I think it's, you know, that... Um... That, that sign, the bell curve meme, yeah. where it's just like the yes. the three heads. Like when you're in the middle coming up as a magic player and you're just the one that yells up <laughs> oh, at the top, the like, but I'm more skillful and I built the better deck. Yes. Then you have LSV, who's just like, yeah, sometimes I go 0-3 because I drew like absolute ass for right. <laughs> six games in a row, yeah. 
Yeah, there's people that feel like they deserve it. Uh, that yeah. are certainly in the middle there. It's the expert beginner mindset. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. When, once you get to, like, people that actually know what they're doing, I think you end up with people that are really stable and just, like, fun to hang out with because of that, which yeah. is why I enjoy Magic Wires. Yep, yeah. So, if I'm Brandon, Brandon, and I know that my opponent... Brandon. Brandon. Yeah, Brandon. Brand, Brandon. Yeah. yeah, Brandon, Brandon. Um, <laughs> I think I might bring in Phyrexian Metamorph. Ooh, Sneak, okay. Uh, it, oh, it looks like the overwhelming majority of ways for my opponent to put in a big chunky creature is not through Sneak Attack. Um, and sure, Channel Emrakul does not allow me to do anything with yeah, But it's that literally metamorph. just Emrakul. Yeah. So if I copy... Uh, a Trastodon, which mm -hmm. is like the lowest impact thing. It's still pretty decent because I can just blow up the lands and now we're just staring down 3-3s three and 9-9s. Nine um, Atali has a very swingy I, def I definitely want Ensnaring Bridge. I might want the Crab's plan here. Yeah, uh, just like mill out their threats. Both, yeah, that, that's another option. Like, I kind of uh, like just going to the Crab's route. I, I don't think there's... A, yeah, I think if... I don't know. Frexian Menorah plays into that plan too. You just make a third it plan. It does, right? yep. There you go. Um, so you can sit behind your bridge and do that. You could also, uh, like I said, copy the Itali. Uh, you don't get the trigger off of Ulamog, the uh, Shizu Slunger, which is kind of crap, but that, that one is what it is. Um, Terra Sunder kills everything besides Emrakul. Oh, that's true. Yeah, Terra Sunder um, is very good. Yeah. What is Steel Sabotage? Is counters it's an artifact. artifact spell? Yeah, it's no good. What's it's? Is it modal? It, it bounces the artifact otherwise. Okay. You can either bounce an artifact or counter one. Yeah, and we don't have Wasteland, right? We just have... Correct. The Wasteland and Strip Mine both went to Kyle. Okay, so there's no reason to really bring in the Crucible if we're going to bring in the uh, Ensnaring Bridge. The Crucible exists in case you want to do Zuran Orb nonsense. So Crucible, Zuran Orb, Fast Bond is a combo. I thought we had, yeah, we have Rami Knife though. Correct, yeah, I don't so, think you need a second one. Yeah, so, and if there's a, I don't think Brennan's looking at the list, so that he doesn't know. Like, there's no removal on this list, right? Uh, and the other one? Yeah, in, in, in Jake's list. There's not a singular piece of removal. Uh, it looks like Jake doesn't have the sideboard up here got it okay but hold on uh we uh, have some sorceries channel natural order turn timber okay yeah i don't see any there <laughs> i'm gonna jump over to the actual oh draft. jake has fury jake has fury he took that very early on yep um so that's not in the list in the main so we know it we know it's lurking so maybe that is a point to, and oh kogla that fights kogla is very good right. yeah okay so maybe we do bring in crucible there's also a rock sand <laughs> whatever that card does it makes a meteorite that deals two damage and then turns into a mono rock. Got it. Yep. Okay. So yeah, uh, Crucible probably makes sense as a redundant effect because the rhyming up excavator has uh, legs and that makes it vulnerable. That makes sense. All right. So we'll see. We have. Uh, let's pull up a card. Ooh, that's a mental misstep. If that if there are like some lands and a playable card after that, I think I snap that. Absolutely, off. mental misstep's incredible. <gasps> this matchup, no. That means the rest of the hand must have been absolute yeah. poo poo. Because Jake has so many mana dorks. Exactly. Does He's... Jake have a meltdown in hand? What's up? He has some red card in his hand. Uh, I don't know if he took... No, Jake didn't take the meltdown. That went okay. to someone in the middle of the... It looks like an old bordered red card to me. But... Uh, he doesn't have the abrade. Fury doesn't come in old border. I don't know. I could have missed seen it too. I mean, oh, a sneak attack. Yeah, it could have been the sneak. That's what I was going to say. Oh, there's a hex drinker. An Echo of Aeons. Any lands? There, are, There's one land. It was a forest. Not very good with that daze that he was holding. Uh, okay, there is that. But then also the race you with one pump of Hexdrinker per turn is uh, not good against a sneak attack deck. No. Uh, so now Brandon is fighting his own mind to decide whether he can play this match without tilting off. That's what's happening mm -hmm. right now. Like at this point in time, if Brendan opens on like two lands where one of them is an island and a days, I think you're actually still in a pretty decent spot. Yes, I think if he gets yeah. I mean, the reason I suggest two lands is because that lets you play the game. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, I think. I think he's pretty favored in this matchup. Uh, he just needs to be able to play a game of Magic. Yeah. Yeah. How many lands is Brendan now? So we have 19 from Jacob. Let's see. 16. 16. 16 plus a million draw spells. Yep. Uh, Lorraine revealed. Yep. And a Greenstone Zenith with a... Uh, Dried Arbor. That's it. Okay. okay the Gemstone Mine. Uh, forest. Okay, there's at least three lands there. I think we... I think this hand plays. This hand... Yeah, you snap keep at this now, point. Yeah, now we're there's playing... A fast Bond. Okay. And now, an Island, I think. 
Man, if we had a, if we is that a Lorien reveal second from the right? No, on it's Snaring Bridge. In Snaring Bridge and Rami Nap. Oh, if we have Rami Nap, I think this is a really good uh, keep because we get the gemstone back and we just never lose it. So we actually have things to do if we can. Keep. Yeah. So we're we're down to five. So if we keep, you just ditch two of the lands. Yeah, fast bond excavator, three lands. Uh, instead of the bridge, uh, ditch the bridge. Oh, maybe uh, that one's hard to say actually. No, yeah, maybe do keep the bridge. Maybe ditch the fast bond. Oh, you could just tap gemstone idly. So well, on the turn you don't have a land, tap it for one, play it back from the graveyard, tap it. That's two. Then you have the land on board already. That's three. So you can get two. I think he might be ditching the fast bond. If there's no way to keep... Oh, no, he's, he's pulling the cards he's keeping. So he, the fast bond ramming up. I think oh, you're going to keep two lands. Yeah, it's a Simic Oh, it's a Simic Growth Chamber. That's the third uh, one. Oh, okay. That's a little more interesting. Does that do anything? Not right. It does in the list overall, especially when you have the crabs, but not right now. Yeah. If it's if if you're just playing the the, the goofy commander start of like land pass bounce land exactly pass like not doing a whole lot. Well, you can do it off fast bond though. Yeah, if you kept the fast bond. Actually, yeah, it's really good with fast bond. Yes, hundred percent. Okay, so fetch first. Fetch for drop. I think that's literally the. Okay, he he bottomed the gemstone mine. Okay. I think that's fine, because the gemstone mine line is really goofy if the excavator disappears from Correct. the board. And it's also, I mean, you have to do it three times to make it go away. Yep. But if you want, like, turn one gemstone for fast bond, you're in an okay spot. Sure, but, yeah. yeah. Do you slow yourself down to turn three, because you can't tap it twice in a turn? That makes sense. All right, so tapping for green for a fast bond turn one, presumably. I think the Misty might have come off the top. Yeah, I think you're right. So we... Which means you got the third land. Yeah, and the context of the hand didn't change from what we saw. Exactly. So there's that. Yep. So he can play the ensnaring bridge so if he not. wants to. So we're 18. <coughs> I think he can play the ensnaring bridge. We could if he wanted to, but again, we're not oh, no, in no. a spot where we need to... He only has two lands left. We don't need to bleed the life because our opponent, even if they play land cradle... Sorry, not like... Uh, creature cradle, that's still... Three mana. We're not losing to Sneak Attack. It could be slow roll on those two Moxen. Yeah. He has three Moxen in his deck. Yeah. Wait. For sure. There's three. I don't know. I play Scared a lot because of that. Oh, I, I, I play Legacy. I'm fearless. <laughs> I play Legacy too, but I play Doomsday, so I just jam. Oh, I, yeah, I play Grief. Nice. That's not <laughs> a good matchup for you. No, it's not. <laughs> That's the reason why Doomsday's not really playable right now. Yeah. Okay, so ramming up into probably this coming back again, just mm -hmm. to thin. We don't have any other good fetch, though, right? It's basics after this. Uh, uh, I believe that's true. Yeah, it's just the drop. Yep. Not a bad place to be, but... Yeah, this deck seems like I could use a Surveil Land. Mm. Hedge Maze, or whatever it's called. Oh my god! Alright. What does he have in hand that he, he just did it's this? Staring Bridge. He has a narrow bridge. And just beat Mason pretty soundly. Really? Yeah, 2-0. Like game one was a little closer. Game two was just kind of a... How's Dan doing? Uh, he's X and 2, I think. And he's only got one match left. Good, for sure. I want... Uh, yeah, having a 5-2 is perfect. I don't want to toot my own horn, but... Uh... Dude, my, my burner call was absolutely wrong, so... <laughs> Dan, Mine too. Dan was my call? Yeah. There was enough cohesion in that list. Like, bringing a couple things together. And Bombardier's just one of another game. Is Elaine still undefeated? Uh, no, Elaine lost to Mason. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We oh, we saw that, yeah, of yeah. course. And she's playing um, Kyle right now. Yeah, there's, a, there's the opportunity for Elaine to go X and 1 for sure. As long as everybody wins one and loses one, that's my goal every time. Well, okay. We've got that, so... Yep. Yeah, that... <laughs> No O sevens, no seven O's. Yep. Not yet. Not until Steven get, gets back in there and <laughs> drafts all the. That's right. Gets the key, O seven. Yeah, it takes the the Keystone card from everybody's deck. Yeah, I mentioned earlier I went oh. the thing where I'm just punting. I'm just gonna go O seven and just take. Uh, one, oh, oh, natural oh. order. Okay, so natural order finding Atroxa or Woodfall Primus Terrastodon seems like the worst option. Yeah. Because you can't. It's a green creature, so. Primus is incredibly bad. Yep. Terrastodon's very bad. Which I think Atrox is. It's gotta be Atrox, though. Yeah. I mean, Primus seems fine, right? You can go Gargaroth, who wants to go nuts. No, it's just Primus. Primus, I don't know. Come on, whatever. Pri 
Primus what can't Primus Primus can't hit creatures? It cannot hit creatures. Oh, okay. And he already has six lands in play. Mm-hmm. I mean, it does stop you, more broken things from happening. You have shut off infinite life. Correct. That's and, that's fair. Yeah. I mean, and, Primus can block a questing base. Yep. True. Brendan is And then come nine. back and destroy it as something else. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so here's a knock against the crab plan. Your opponent is Emrakul. That, yeah, that's, that's a great right. point. <laughs> oh, crab plan's terrible. Yeah. yeah. And this one, crab plan, not so hot. Come on, Phyrexia Metamorph. I was like, you can mill away all their threats. Yeah. Yeah, no, obviously terrible. If you Phyrexia Metamorph their Woodfall Primus, uh, Jake's Woodfall Primus, and you get his Gruel Land, and then he has to attack, like... Is that a just... Gruel Turf, or is that just a... No, okay, it's just a Mountain Forest. Stomping Ground. Yeah. That would be very funny. All right, well, we got three mana. Lorraine Revealed. Let's just draw some cards. Man. Oh, Crystal Vein. Yep. All right, days, a little late. And it's not a ponder. No, it's just a days. Days land and something that's blue. It's another blue card, yeah. Still has a ensnaring bridge in hand. Good job not deploying the ensnaring bridge, given that you're attacking. That's yeah, you got the one hit in right, and now you can just plop down ensnaring bridge and you stared. Oh, the atrox is in hand. That makes that's sense. That's why we. And so is the kogla. Can the kogla kill? Go the bridge? Coke. Yes. Sure. It fights bridges? What? I, I think it can destroy an artifact on one, and then... Yeah, it's modal. No, it's trample. Uh, never mind. Trample and haste or fight. Okay. I no, thought... it's a, it's the activated ability. Yeah. Okay. Discard Kogla and Yadara, destroy up to one target artifact or enchantment. I knew there was something on that card that got rid of it. Yeah, so nope. you, pay, you pay four mana, discard it, you pop, and uh, you naturalize cool. something, and then draw a card. Mm -hmm. Four mana for Thrun there? Yep. So there's the... That's the bridge, right? At the top of... Brendan has it. Yeah, he, he played the bridge. Yep. I see Gerard looking very small. Mm. And I guess he has enough cards in hand that he can attack with the Questing Beast if he wants to, and then yep. play a card to keep it underneath. Yeah, and he... He either realized very loudly that he still had the Daze in hand and didn't Daze Magus of the Order. Yeah, I think that's, that, that is what happened. Because, uh... It was natural order, but yeah. No, oh, no, the Megas... Oh, yeah, Magus. I see what you're saying. Okay. Because now when your opponent untaps and sacks the Woodfall Primus... Oh, is that Magus of the Order? I yes, Magus okay. of the Order. Goes to get Terastodon, blows up your ensnaring bridge, two of their own lands, and has a Woodfall Primus come back. Are you saying that's a good or bad thing for Jake? <laughs> yeah, no, it seems very bad. Okay, Klog Kogla and Yidara are in hand. Atroxa is in hand. So we do only have, I believe, the Terastodon in the in the main. But when you sacrifice the Woodfall Primus, the Persist is going to get the bridge. Yeah, it's brutal. The ramming up at least lets the site Crystal Vein keep cycling. Titania would be pretty strong right here. Yeah. But even that, like... Yeah, it feels like Brandon is in that classic, um, like, I have a bunch of two-card Montes, and mm -hmm. I have to draw one of them and then hope I draw another one. Yep. So, for Magus of the Order, what is the activated just tap? You pay the, the mana cost up front? Uh, no, it's, you have to pay the mana cost twice. Oh, okay. At least for the other ones, that's true. Okay, this oh, one's pay one. one and tap. Okay. okay. Ignoble Hierarch... But you just sack it and another green creature. Yeah, you sacrifice the Wolfall Primus. Yeah. Then you go and get Terastodon as the last option. You can blow up your lands. Brandon's land doesn't matter. And then Wolfall Primus persists, takes care of the bridge. Okay, there's a Brainstorm. Brainstorm is good at fixing a lot of draws. Mm -hmm. There's an LED and a green Sun Zenith and something in the middle. Mm. It looks like a strip mine, but it's not a strip mine. I think it's just an island. Yes. I think it is just an island. So if he can green sun zenith, what does he get? One, two, three, four, five, six mana? You get I, a six uh, dropper above? Titania. I think that is either, if not the best, the only option in his list up that high in the curve. Titania. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. You could green sun zenith Hex for Hex Drinker. No, scavenging oh. ooze. Okay. So when you sack the Woodfall Primus, you eat it in response to the trigger with the Scooze, and you still lose the bridge to the, to the Terastanon. Honestly, pretty good. That's pretty good. Because now you're not losing two things or more. 
I mean, you are still facing down a Terastodon. Yes. But you can get there. Terastodon has no key, no no keywords besides big, right? Correct. And you have a 4-4 four, four questing beast. You could also do Hex Drinker and get big enough to block. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, you can Hex Drinker and then... We're doing this for three. Three? So he's going for Tireless Provisioner? That sounds like it. Unless there's anything in the board that we... Nope. Don't. Does uh, Zenith only get green creatures? Yes. Yes. Okay, so... He's going for Tireless Provisioner. That makes food or treasure. Oh, wait, no. So he's tapped two more lands. So that's five. Okay. Okay, okay. So there we go. He, in response, Magus. Yeah. For the Terrasalon. Brandon must be kicking himself for not casting that Deus. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think he had the mana on tap, too. He didn't even have to alt cast it. Yeah. Brutal. There's the Terrasalon. Mm hmm. Bang. Primus is hitting, just as you said. It does come in with a minus one minus one counter, so Ooh, there's that. I would if I if I was Jake, I'd literally just break my mocks and both forests. You, you go down to two lands. Yeah, I have an ignoble. All right. Like the last thing I want to do is give Brendan the opportunity to pull out of this game with blockers. Sure. Yeah, it's not like he has any wraths. No, Trasadon like creates those weird thought patterns because mm -hmm. of that because it has no keywords. Yeah. And the bridge is gone, so you don't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. Now you have to worry about the fact that he has six power on board in just two creatures. Right. Let alone whatever is going to come out of this zenith. Right. I, I missed the other two lands, so it's definitely for five. Does Confluence bounce? Mm -hmm. So that's that's one possible thing that Brandon could do. is He could, uh, now that you're down to three lands, pop bounce your two giant monsters. Yep. Uh... Wait, he targeted the Crystal Vein? Huh. Can we bring up Woodfall Primus? This is, this is the card no, that does what, as much what, as it can, right? Woodfall Primus targeted the... Not Woodfall Primus, sorry, Trastodon. Can we bring that up? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, because this is the card that does as much as it can. Correct. Okay. That That's my only concern. No, he's fine. Yeah, it just it destroys up to three. Okay. Cool. And you target three, and any, as long as any of the targets are resolved. Yep, all right, good. I didn't even realize it said up to three. <coughs> I thought it had to be exactly three. That's same. That's why I questioned it. But even that would just care that the mm -hmm. there's three at the time it is cast. Okay, so he did what you said. He popped two of his own forests. He wanted to keep his mocks. Okay. Which is fine. Uh, like I don't understand. I don't. Getting the crystal vein then meant that Brendan couldn't make the five three after Zenith resolved. So cool, I guess. No, because he... Unless the Brandon, did Brandon already have a land in the graveyard? Okay, if, if Brandon already had a land in the graveyard, then that's true. He couldn't make two of... Two of five threes. He could well, only make... he still wouldn't have made... No, he could, yeah, he couldn't have made two, right? Because the ETB is on the stack. You sack the Crystal Vein once no, Titania's in play. No, doesn't work, because you'd have to target it before you sack... Yeah, I don't think... Oh, it's a target? That. It's not a land? Correct. Oh, okay. I'm pretty sure, actually. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Oh, God, there's going to be so many Protector of Argoth. Do, 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 do. I play this card, but it's in German, so I never read it. Mm. Target land card, okay. yeah. Yep, all right, that makes sense. Okay, so the LED he's had hanging in his hand for a long time. There's also value in just taking the 3-3, three, three, like I said. It's a it, it's not the most dangerous play for Jake to make that target and Brendan let it go through. For Brendan, it just adds more power and makes attacking much more difficult. Is there um, is there anything underneath that 3-3? Three, three? Is that Or is that just another token that's represented the same thing? Yeah, okay, it's just... Cool. So now there's two 5-3s and a 3-3. Three, three. Yep, and we're... We, no, for getting double power. natural order, he's doing yeah. fine. We are we still on Jake's turn? I think we're still on Jake's. No, this no, is okay. all in response to the Green Sun Zenith. The natural order happened in response to Green Sun Zenith, so now yep. we're on Brandon's turn, and he just popped two sack lands after casting the. Yeah, LED. but why? Why did we tap one, two, three, four, five, six? Uh, six was for the f one plus the five for the Green Sun Zenith. To get Titania. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, we're still on Brendan's turn. For some reason, I thought it was Jake's turn. I don't know why he popped the LED. Echo. Oh, Echo. He has an Echo there. They're, they're in Echo territory now. Which puts the fast bond back, which means that we are possibly back to infinite life. <laughs> so because Jake's draw, it wasn't necessarily anemic, but he, A, B plan, you hit almost all of your A's being the creatures. So they're, they were mostly in hand. Brendan doesn't know that. This is pretty good for Jake. Because he needed to find the sneak attack, which is a one of X left in the deck. True, but even if he didn't get sneak attack, he only has four mana. Mm -hmm. 
He can sneak and mana, and for Brandon not to do anything. Yep. And not to say that it couldn't happen. Um, but yeah, I mean, if Brandon draws a fast bond right now, this game is wide open. Yep. But you're right. I think this probably is better for Jake if you just look at it objectively right now. Yep. The the Emrakul is still floating in the deck, which is fine. Um, I'm not too worried about it if I was Brandon, but because it resets a lot of stuff as long as I hit. I think that's bridge. That's that's a bridge and a Chrome Host Seed Shark and a Treasure Crew. No. Uh, a Hull Breacher and a Brainstorm and a Land. Mm -hmm. And I believe we played the Crystal Vein, so we're all out of land drops. I don't know what the other card is next to the Brainstorm though. Yeah, he did. He, I don't think he we have anything a, to do. I think Jake has an Atali and some lands. Not all lands. Like, I don't think Jake's turn is going to be a bunch of fireworks. But we're, we definitely have a plan in front of us. Jake needs two cards to win the game. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. or even one card. Well, just a sneak attack. Because you played the fourth land. That sneak attack. You have a Noble yeah. Hierarch for the activation. And if you have an Ember Cool. Right. Good or nine. a channel on an Ember Cool. Yeah. I don't know what he was hoping to draw other than literally fast bond, but this, this casting this right now because you, you're not saving any mana by casting it now. No, nope. feels a little loose. And even this, like, what are, what are you hoping to draw? I don't know what he's playing around with. Is that it's a chromo sheet seed shark, but that can't get cast for one anyway. There must have been some amount of mana floating. I just oh, don't know what it is off the LED. So he must have had other mana floating, and he used the colorless mana. Yeah. So he still had some blue off the LED. Okay, so he had three mana. That's more justified. Oh, yeah, that. off the Crystal Vein because he sacked it again. Yes. So there's two colorless floating. Yep. Which means you could have cast the bridge. You could have cast the bridge. So, are you, again, you are putting solace in the fact that your opponent does not draw sneak attack. Yep. Or channel. Or channel. Or, or, or a threat. I mean, if your opponent draws channel, they're at 13. Okay, 14, I see another... 15. They could still hard cast Ember Cool and... Sylvan Carry added and a Magus. Of the order. Plus at least three lands. Yep. Oh, we have a uh, Circle of Dreams Druid. Oh, maybe that's what that card is. The, what, that was the one all the way on the right. Yeah, that's... Okay, it wasn't a Magus then. Still threatening. I mean... Oh, yeah, it's Circle of Dreams Druid, land, land. I can't tell the card in the middle. It looks like an artifact. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, I'm slowly dying. Yeah. I mean, we all are, right? Enter piece of bitch. Yeah, that's great. All right. If Circle. it's a land, it's a mox. Yep. So there's a circle of dreams, Druid. Days this. Um, well, it doesn't have haste. Nope. There's the carry out. We're just setting up. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, he's got the smooth ass turns. We're going to be able to cast the Atali next turn. Basically, we're just setting up to be able to cast that. The elephants can't crash on this turn, right? Because you're crashing into a, into a questing beast. And, and another elephant. Right, yeah, yeah. Right. So it is a, a, but at least a, like trading, if you could justify trading them, then you could think about it. Yep. You could throw your Terastin on. Oh, it's a Chromox and an Emrakul. And uh, two lands. Okay, so there's an Emrakul floating in there. And there's some fifth card, but yeah, there's an Emrakul, two lands, and One, a Chromox. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. We are two mana short from Emrakul, if my mana is correct. Yeah. One, two, three, four... Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 14 I have fourteen. Okay. Fifteen. No, he has fifteen. It's because he can use the Chrome Mox. As long as he can imprint on the Chrome Mox, I think he has fifteen. Okay. Oh man, if we see a hard cast Emrakul next turn, that would be delightful. Let's see. I don't think this is a pivotal turn for Brandon like no not unless he can win <laughs> if he makes infinite life here then yeah then then it is a pivotal turn because we're not Emer Emrakul flies so our five threes are doing nothing he's kind of got to attack and then cast incinerary bridge or lose yeah good start is he floating one, or is that his storm count? What is that one? <laughs> That's a good question. Okay, so land, land, a crystal veins, uh, forest, and something. There's the Dryad Arbor, still... Oh, it's an incubator token from the crown of the seashore. That makes sense. What's that bottom blue card? I do not know. He doesn't have subtlety. 
It looks like a new border. It's not tied to Shauna's tied binder. Can we bring those? Let's see. Oh, uh, is, is it Mystic oh, it could be Mystic Confluence. That would be very strong. Yeah, if, Cir if you bounce Circle, Dreams Druid, and... Yes. Could also be Gush? No, nah, the border on it looks too, no. Okay. Oh, or Lorelei Revealed, or a Temporal Mastery. Oh, yep, yep, yep. God, that, that's the worst. To <laughs> brainstorm into Temporal Mastery on your own turn. Correct. So he's <coughs> fetching, getting a basic island off mm -hmm. the Prismatic Vista. Because the only thing we can do are fetch basics at this point. Yep. The Growth Chamber is on board, the Tribe is on board, the Dryad Arbor is in hand, the Crystal Vein is floating in the lit in the deck, I think, or is it in hand? It might be in hand. Crystal Vein's in, uh, it was floating in the deck. Okay. Because it was one of, well, it was brainstormed. No, no, no there it is. Yeah. Yep. Um, Shell Dock Isle is still I'm pretty sure it's a Mystic Confluence on the bottom yep. there. I'm just looking to see what else we have in the list as far as lands are concerned, because there does come a point where he's removing enough mm -hmm. cards from the list where it's just like three fetch lands or something, two fetch lands. Sure, yeah. Okay. He's figuring out what he's going to tap for that Mystic Confluence. He has so many incubator tokens. Jeez. What do you mean? The Titania tokens? Well, those two, but I mean incubator tokens. After he casts this, he's going to get another one. Yes. Yep. That, well, that's six mana. Huh. What? It looks like Might of Old Crozo. What the heck? Oh, that's this hot. That's the Hydra. Oh, it's Gold Gold Vein Hydra. So we can use the Gold Vein Hydra to turn in enough mana to can cast his Mystic Confluence. How do you turn that into? Doesn't it make treasures or something when you? Yeah, when it? it dies. Oh, okay. Huh. I think he's just putting up defenses at this point. Wait, defenses aren't very okay. good. Okay, cool. Math is for blockers. Are we literally trying to figure out if we can kill it? <laughs> Right here. One, two, three, four, five. Five attackers against one, two, three, four, five blockers. So the Chromo Seed Shark gets through. The rest of that stuff does not. That just gets blocked but out. Every creature that dies from Jake is one less mana. So he, he, that can't, is, yeah. he can't lose any of them if he wants to make Emrakul next turn. Yeah. Ooh, leaving another one back. Interesting. Okay. How big is the Fall Primus? Is it a 6-6 six, six natively? It's a 6-6. Six, six. It's a 5-5 five, five right yes, now. Yes, because of the Princess Counter. Okay, so aside from questing Druid, uh, everything can be traded off profitably from Jake's side. As, as long as he doesn't lose a single creature. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, sorry. We can't block... Oh, yeah, the Terracid unblocks the Gold Vein Hydra. We make a bunch of treasure tokens. Oh, the Lantern 3. Nice. Ooh. Okay, so Terracid on Brox... Blocks profitably the Gold Vein Hydra. What fall Primus blocks profitably the Questing Beast? Those are five five then, tokens. Are, are they five fives or five threes? They're five threes. Or, okay, five, five threes. Like five something. So the he, I said five powers. Yeah, the elephants trade off with the five threes, and that's really but, the but only trade you, that happens. If you trade ever, then you can't get them cool. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just looking from. Yeah, yeah. This is a math is for blockers scenario, so I'm yeah. just trying to line up. Positive. If I'm Jake, positive block here, can't do brain Okay, so he, he's chump blocking with the Woodfall Primus. He could also Wait. chump with the. Oh no, he's he's blocking with the Terrastodon. Okay, yeah, so nine nine. Which is what I. Yeah. That's a profitable block. You could that also makes a lot of treasures. Yes, you could also profitably block the Questing Beast with the Woodfall Primus. Primus. Yeah. Doesn't it have Death Touch? It has Death Touch. You'll die. Oh, okay. All right, that thing's well, keyword soup. And it's, yeah. it's yeah. okay. It's okay. The, the problem is if Jake loses a single creature, Emrakul isn't castable next turn. So it's a question of. Is Jake willing to risk the life loss? Yeah. And, like, how much life can he lose? We're also pretty sure Brand, uh, Brandon has a Mystic Confluence in hand, so exploding this Hydra into I don't tokens. think he has Confluence. Okay. What's the blue card in his hand, then? He just drew it one that looked blue at the bottom. I, he might have just drew it. I, 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 okay. don't, I, I don't think. He, I, I, didn't, I, thought, I didn't see the Brainstorm result. I thought it was one off the bottom of the Brainstorm. Okay. 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 Yeah. I didn't see the Brainstorm result. Yeah, he got okay. a Crystal Vein out of it and some blue card. Okay. We don't know. Yeah, it looks to have a newer border, is basically all we can okay. come up with. Well, then Confluence is a blowout. But it would also be weird not to cast Confluence on the Circle of Dreams Druid. I guess maybe he's not thinking of literally only Emrakul, because that's the scariest okay, part. I see Hull Breacher in the Hull far Breacher, right. Hull Breacher's been in there. It's been yep. there for a bit. Okay, so these are the blocks that I that I had lined up. Okay, so it's, he's going to trade off, which is good for Brandon. Yep. Eight. Wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You have nine mana. You can still hard oh. cast Atali. And Brandon gets a ton of treasures. Yes. But they're tapped. So it turn. Are they tapped? I think they come and play tapped. Uh, let's see. You're gonna have to. Yes. Moxfield it. 
You just pass over that much, Yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Yep, tapped. Yeah, I think they, they kept his power in check by making a couple Got it. Okay. They've realized the mistake of so many treasures coming to play untapped yeah. at this point. Okay. Okay, but but Circle of Dreams Druid got hurt, got crimped pretty bad by that. But you can still hard cast a Tali, and I believe you can hard cast a Troxa because you have all all your lands tap for yeah, there's a, the green, and then you have the blue. You have a Sylvan Carry added. Nope. That so you you can't. So you have the black off Ignoble, the blue off Carryated. You still need the white. You don't have a treasure. You can't make. Uh, Jake can't make the white necessary oh, yeah, for right, a Troxa. Yeah. But it's not in hand anyway. We know that. Where is it? I mean, it could be now. Well, I don't. Atroxa was before the wheel. Hmm. Okay. Uh, that's why uh, Jake had a natural order for uh, Primus and then Terastodon because Atroxa was in hand. Okay, so there's the land. Tapping for four. Seven. That looks like an Atali to me. Mm-hmm. Yep. There we go. Primal Conqueror. So now we're going to, everybody, exile up to one card. Oh, so, so cloning this does actually get you the trigger. Yep. Because it ETBs. Correct. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we got another mana dork, which, which isn't great. Well, I, it provides both white and blue for Atroxa, which makes it more difficult for Brandon to um, manage it. I'm not saying you don't want it. Yeah, you but... keep going. It is Brandon for that. Oh, the days again. <laughs> He hit days off it twice. Oh, oh man, Jake oh. must be fuming. I would lose my mind. Oh, and he's even he's even misstepping the token. Because oh. it, it make doing so makes it more how rude. L- leaving the noble on board makes it more difficult for Brandon to try and manage the casting yeah. of Atroxa. It right. also, I mean, it gives Jake two mana. So yeah. <coughs> and a second. Uh, what's that trigger? Uh, yeah, the whatever exalted trigger. Exalted, yeah. Uh, is that Echo of Eons? It is Echo of Eons. Right, right, right. The last card is Echo of Eons. That makes sense. Yeah, I saw that now. Now, now you said that I remember it. Oh, you have Hole Breacher, Bridge, and Echo of Eons. Echo of Eons costs six to cast. It costs six in the front side, yeah. Uh, uh, you can't. Oh, you have all, those treasures. all the treasures. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, this okay. Is that's, that's... Jake, Jake's done. Yeah, that... yeah, but it doesn't get rid of his board, though. You gotta deal with it. But you had, the, you had the Staring Bridge to buy your oh, time. Okay. And then you can gain infinite life off your fast bomb. Right. He also right. effectively right. has 30 mana next turn. Yeah. So. There's the Hole Bridge. <laughs> yep. Hall reach. Uh, he couldn't do he that. He can't then. do that. Stop, 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 stop. Uh, he, he's going to untap. The treasures would be gone anyway. Right. Just remind him, though. So he's he's going to be doing that on his upkeep. Exactly. Instead. Yep. So he casts Hall reach on his upkeep. Correct. Because there's no follow up play. We're in a position where it's no, no, no harm, no foul. Exactly. Yeah, okay. We're, they're talking through it right now and explaining what's happening. So. Brandon's just gonna wait and do it later. There's no reason to have cast it anyway. Showboat cast Echo V on hold priority. <laughs> that would be pretty brutal. Uh, there's still a Terastodon token hanging out, out there, it looks like. Oh, yeah, the Terastodon is still there. That's the thing, is you still you have Mystic Confluence that you can draw to eventually, and you you cycle that back, and we are kind of in like capsize with buyback territory where we just keep cycling through the deck with Twister yeah. and Confluence and um... He also still has five threes. Okay, so yeah. he's casting it, floating three, it looks like. And then... Oh, yeah, we have all the Incubate tokens that have been kicking around, too. Correct. Every time you cast something, it gets bigger. Yep. Okay, so then I, I was echoing off of the lands. Mm-hmm. And Jake is getting to read about Echo of Aeons. Yep, and, and he's using the rest of the treasure tokens to just kind of clean up board state. So Brandon's going to end up with seven treasure tokens and seven new cards. Emrakul was in hand, so it yep. gets shuffled back in. And that, that's it. Uh, Jake gets to draw one brand new card. Jake gets to draw zero cards, right? I thought it was uh, a pack. I think you're thinking of Narset. Correct, but I thought they had the same text. Let's see. No, it's only okay. one you're drawing. Yeah, for the for the turn. Okay. Yeah, Hull Breacher is even more brutal. Yep. There is that fun uh, edge case with Narset and Dredge, where you can bizarre Baghdad into a Narset with no fear, and just you just yeah, yeah. dredge through yep. it. Whereas with Hull Breacher, you never get the opportunity to dredge. But to be fair, nobody plays in Larkside and Vintage. That's true. But you can play it in Commander. 
Right? You can play Bizarre. You can play Bizarre and Commander. Yeah. I do play Bizarre and Commander. Yeah. Perfectly balanced. It doesn't tap for a mana. Correct. Who would want to play that It's one? actually not great in Commander. Like, it's oh. good in Get Rog and not much else. Yeah. Somebody asked, Fosh, like, last week, what would happen if they uh, restricted Mishra's Workshop and Commander and said two things. One, um... Or not, not, sorry, restricted they workshop. And, no, no, restricted. Wor it's unbanned in Commander. You can play Workshop and oh. Commander. If they un if they restricted Workshop and Vintage, I said the first thing is they have to unrestrict all the artifacts around it, and the second is you would have about thirty minutes to buy it on the cheap before all the Commander players out there buy it. Correct. Twister off the echo. Yep. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh shoot! Oh, there's another yeah. Twister coming. Yeah. yeah. Oh, amazing. Yeah, so if nothing else, Brent has to feel happy that he gets to do this. Then there's the Confluence. Confluence to bounce the things before you yep. Twister him away. Yep. There's the Terastodon, Circle of Dream Druids. I just Atali. really want them. Uh, <coughs> I want them the week <clears throat> after Eternal Weekend to unrestrict Library of Alexandria because that card should not be restricted for any reason other than money reasons. And if you do it after Eternal Weekend, it means that nobody needs to play a live vintage tournament for yeah. a full year, so you're not like messing around with the private market. Correct. I don't know. That would be great. Oh, and that is the game. There's the scoop. Okay, yeah. Brandon got there. That was a. Oof. I don't know if Brandon ever wins that game, but it was cer certainly going to be a whole lot of drawing cards. Yeah. Oh, I mean, he will in time, right? Like I said, you start cycling through the twist, through both Twisters and Mystic and uh, Mystic Confluence to reset the board. Yeah. So th at that point, he doesn't actually need to cast Mystic Confluence again for the bounce mode. He can just draw Brandon three cards. Kyle. You can just draw three cards, and you have the opportunity. Like, all your basics are in play at some point. You can make in you can gain infinite life. Put all your lands on the battlefield. Yeah, and then your deck is just gas, and you're left with how many? We said he was playing sixteen, uh, right? Sixteen lands, right. or yeah, sixteen lands. I mean, less. Even fewer though. He has like a million in play already. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's like there comes yeah. a point in time where you have all your lands in play. So you're now now you're playing with a twenty four card deck. Yeah. Less the permanence that you're you have on board anyway. So you're right. probably down to about twenty cards. So the opportunity of twistering into Echo into Mystic Confluence to find one of the other two. To just cycle he, on a turn. He can also just, uh, at some point, find Temporal Mastery and just win off Chromos TC Yeah, Yep, which was going to be coming up shortly yeah. because we'd cast the Echo, which makes a 6-6 six, six when you, you know, exactly. activate it and then the Twister. Brandon Stanbury is Cody's coming to the other side. Right. Nice. Are you going to be flying out? Yeah, this is going to be me taking off. 